2024 focus prioritize and push for you must bear fruit and fruit that remains my name is Bansi Kamogwe welcome to the voice of Jubilee we are coming to you live from this beautiful city in Nairobi in Jubilee Christian Church Parklands Nairobi's Church of Excellence and the House of Restoration on behalf of Bishop Alan and Reverend Kathy Kuna I want to welcome you to this beautiful service and we want to thank you for making this your choice channel for your Sunday service nourishment. I want to tell you that the Lord had you in mind when this day was made. Sit tight and enjoy a Holy Ghost experience. You are a protocol pusher. You are a protocol breaker. Let me tell you today the Lord is going to visit you wherever you are. There is no distance in the spirit. Let your faith be up. Let your eyes be lifted to God and you will receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. We are located along the Wangari Mathai Road right opposite Premier Academy. Do come and come with your family and your friends. We cannot wait to have you. And by the way, we have very beautiful, beautiful programs tailor-made for your children, your teens, and your young adults in mind. So do come. We have very qualified trainers who have the passion to bring up the next generation in the ways of the Lord. This is our duty as parents, as caregivers, to bring our children to the house of the Lord. And the good Lord is going to bless you. Please note that a call center is now open. You can call if you need counseling, if you want prayers, if you have any kind of inquiry. Or do you even have a testimony? We would love to hear from you throughout the service. There will be people that will be waiting to hear from you. Indeed, the good Lord is going to bless you. Daughters of Zion, daughters of Zion. Last month we were not in because we all went to the Benny Hinn crusade, but we want to announce to you that we are back on that year of March. Karibu sana, bring your sister girl, bring your mama, bring your boss, bring your co-worker, bring everybody. You do not want to miss this. Reverend Kathy has been preparing. She has a word for you. We are going to have an amazing time in the very presence of the Lord. Have you you followed our socials we are on insta we are on youtube we are everywhere please do like subscribe share our links keep in touch with the events that are coming out during that throughout the year and throughout the weeks in the name of jesus um and speaking of socials um i have i, I saw this very amazing um, quotes by our bishop on his insta and i want to share it with you this morning and he said um, that that the mark that walking in obedience to God's command does not earn us salvation, but it is proof of our salvation. Salvation is free; we can earn it. We get it through by through grace by faith. And so, 
when we act in obedience, when we walk in obedience, it is a mark of our allegiance to the Almighty God. It is a mark and it, ex and it shows who you belong to and who you are serving. So I want you to know that walking in obedience is for your good. It's going to help you. It's going to enable you bear the good fruit that the Lord is asking you to bear in this season. And I want you to, le and I want to let you know that it gives us access. Obedience is what will give us access to fruitfulness. It will give us access to the fruit that has been set within us. Did you know that when, when, you, are, when you are born again, you are upgraded and you are given access also into the mind of God, into what God has for you, into what he has desired for you. When you are in salvation, even when you read the scripture, it is not like reading any other book. It opens up to you revelations that no other people, that people cannot see by the eye of the flesh but by the eye of the spirit you are able to see in the name of Jesus and in these last days I want to encourage you to pray to the Lord that he will strengthen you to stand for the truth to be in obedience to be in alignment no matter who else stands for it because in this season we're in a place where like the Bible said, people shall be lovers of themselves. They shall be lovers of money. And people are willing to do anything to be everywhere just to fulfill the desires of their flesh. But in this season where as a nation we have desired, we have prayed for a revival, it is key for us to note that he is requiring total alignment from us, total allegiance to the kingdom of the living God. So be bold, child of God. The Lord is with you. He has you in mind. He knew and that he would plant you in this season where it seems chaotic. It may seem like it doesn't make sense, but guess what? He knew it. He planted you here. He knew you would be here. And so he empowered you. He already put it within you. Remember what we said last time, that that which you are running to and fro to look for, it's already within you. So look for it. Search for it from within in the name of Jesus. What is the condition of your heart when you receive this word of the Lord? That will matter. May the Lord help you to weed it out. Weed out the stubbornness. Weed out the pride. Weed out the... the the, the, the messed up mindsets, you know, because when you weed it out and your, love, your heart is left open, then that, that word that is planted in your seed, it is going to bear much fruit. And guess what? It is not just about you. There is a generation waiting for you to arise. If you don't arise, you will answer to God. It is serious. You will answer to God. So obedience is beyond you. It's beyond just where you are. It also goes to your generation, to your families, and to the next, to, to the people that are around you. Pardon me. Jesus speaking to the Jews in John 10, and they were inquiring to know who, if he was really the Messiah. I want to read to you what he answered to them. He said to them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Your works... Your fruit is what bears witness of who you are. Remember what the word of the Lord says, that you shall know them by their fruit. And in the same chapter of John 10, the, the Jesus said that my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. Are you feeling confused? You don't know the direction to take in this season. You are the sheep of Christ. He is our good shepherd. He is going to guide you. He is going to help you. Just key in key into the word of the Lord. Focus on the voice. He will guide you and he shall lead you in the ways that you should go. Arise, child of God. Indeed, there is a generation that is awaiting for your manifestation. By the way, people have been asking, where is woman without limits? Please go to our YouTube channel, Reverend Kathy Kuna, and you will enjoy amazing and very inspiring stories. You will be blessed and you will be uplifted. All the stories that you want to catch up with, they are right there in the mighty name of Jesus. And now we are getting into that moment. Please know that we have prayed for you. We have prayed for your salvation. We have believed God for your healing. So as we get into this time of praise of, and, and of worship, and when as we are giving and as the word is coming, 
there is no distance in the spirit. The word of the Lord will come there. The spirit of the Lord shall minister to you healing and grace. And when he does, remember to testify. Remember to testify in the name of Jesus. We now hand you over to the main service. Put your hands together for Jesus.
in your neighbor about God still does wonders because his miracles are every day. Every morning is a miracle. Every day is a miracle. Hallelujah! Let me hear you shout for Jesus!
to the King of Kings, to the one who brought you today, to the one who makes you live, to the one that we serve. Let me hear you shout. Look at your neighbor, tell them our God has a final say. So I want to tell you, if you're watching us, let me tell you, the doctor has told you a report. Jesus has a final say. If the court has given you a report, Jesus has a final say. Shout to the Lord! Let me hear you shout! Put your hands together like this, everybody!
only true God. He ani arama si areja. He shkani rami anati alari ada haya. Ha, ha. You are worthy of it all.
Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Oh, I tell you, the glory of God is in this house this morning. And our lives will never be the same again. Oh, Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, mighty God. There is no other God but only you. You alone deserve our worship. You alone deserve our praise. You alone deserve all the adoration. Oh, Lord, there is no one else like you. And we are grateful this morning, oh God. 
For blessed is the man whom you have chosen, O God. The man that you have caused to dwell, that you approach you, O God. The man that you have caused to dwell in your courts, where we will be satisfied with your goodness, O God. And this morning we are grateful that you have gathered us again in your house, O God. We thank you for the table that you have laid for us today. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. Thank you for honoring us with your glory. We thank you, Father, for healings. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for lifting in this house, O God. We thank you that you are not leaving us as safe from our God. None shall be left the same, O God. We give you the glory this morning. We give you the honor, everlasting God. Receive all the praise. Receive all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name. And here in JCC, is it okay we put our hands together and just celebrate and honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Oh, come on, let's appreciate Jesus. Let's appreciate Jesus. Oh, come on, let's appreciate Jesus. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise this morning. He's worthy of our adoration. Oh, come on, appreciate him, appreciate him. The glory of God is in this place. I tell you, if you are trusting God for healing, whatever it is that you are trusting God for, the table is already laid and God is going to minister to you. Even those who are watching us on, on Facebook and YouTube, God bless you. Thank you for making JCC your church of worship once again uh, today. And we know the word of God is coming. Don't go anywhere. Just stay there. Actually, you can just share the link and invite other people to join so that they can be ministered to as well in Jesus' name. Can we put our hands together and just celebrate? Amen. Let's celebrate and appreciate those who are watching us. Oh, appreciate them, appreciate them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Why don't you just appreciate your neighbor on your right and on your left, even as you take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is time to give. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to be reading from the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse number 13. Man, there are atmospheres. You don't know how to transition. Amen. But glory to God. God is faithful. Galatians 3, 13. And if for those who are watching us, if you'd like to give uh, our pay bill facility, our pay bill number is 545-700. And the account name is JCC. And for those who would like to write out a check, just write it out to Jubilee Christian Church. And if you'd like to swipe for those who are in-house, you can talk to the usher on your aisle and they are going to assist you. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Glory to God. Now, last Sunday, uh, we started looking at God cares about your prosperity. And today, I want to continue in line with the same thought. And I just want to add a subtopic of you are qualified to prosper. Qualified to prosper or to be fruitful. Glory to God. Now, the vision of God concerning you, the plan of God and the vision of God for you is that you would prosper in everything that you do. Because just like our God is, he's a prosperous God. There is nothing that God engages with that does not prosper. And so you need, it's important for you to understand that, that God has actually qualified you for you to prosper. So God does not just desire for you to prosper, but he has gone ahead and qualified you in order that you may prosper. Now, our prosperity our prosperity our qualification is based on the fact that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Your qualification to prosper is, is based on the fact that you have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 28, the Bible shows us that one of the curses that, uh, you know, that caused men not to prosper, the one of the curses was actually the curse of poverty because poverty is actually a curse. When you study in the word of God, the Bible says in that uh, Deuteronomy, 
he says that you know people will go and plant seeds and they will only bring in little people will go and they will plant vineyards and they will not take of them why because that is actually a curse when you don't see productivity in your life when there is no fruitfulness but I love it because God has a solution to everything because he brought us into a space where he has qualified us to have a turnaround of those kind of experiences and the portion of scripture where the Bible says that God has redeemed us from the curse of the law through Jesus Christ that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us now the blessing of Abraham is not the physical material blessings that you see the blessing of Abraham is actually justification by faith that God has justified you and qualified you to be a partaker to be in Christ Jesus today and by reason of your being in Christ Jesus every curse of poverty has been broken from off of your life every curse of limitation has been broken from off of your life now by reason of the blessing of God no matter where you may find yourself you will always prosper because it is not so much where you are like what is upon you it is what is upon you that governs what is around you when you have the blessing of God upon you then the blessing the prosperity of God will definitely be seen upon your life and so the Bible lets us know then how do we manifest the blessings of Abraham because there is a blessing of Abraham but then there is the blessings of Abraham where the Bible says that I will make you exceedingly fruitful where the Bible says kings shall come out of thee what is that talking about influence by reason of you being justified then you can produce blessings then you can be prosperous oh can I hear an amen by reason of that blessing being upon your life so how do you actualize it in your life by cooperating with the laws of the kingdom how do you cooperate with the laws of the kingdom the laws of the kingdom you are tithing you are giving in the house of God being faithful with what God has given you as you begin to cooperate with this kingdom principles that is when you begin to see prosperity being manifested upon your life you see the goodness of God being fulfilled upon your life can I hear an amen so when you see the material things those are not the prosperity they are just the indications that you are a prosperous person glory be to God Hallelujah. And so as we give this morning, I want you to know that God has qualified you to prosper. You are qualified to prosper. And you can be nothing less but prosperous. Can I hear an amen? amen. Glory to God. If you came with your tithe to the house of the Lord, I want you just to stand up and lift it up in the presence of the Lord. And the rest of us with our giving that which we came to worship the Lord with, I want you just to package it nicely. Amen. As you honor God like a prosperous man and woman. Hallelujah. As we lift it up in the presence of the Lord. If you are giving to us the hands of compassion or the media, uh, uh, the, the hands of compassion uh, or the, the missions, kindly just indicate on the envelope and that will be a great blessing. Let's present it before the Lord. If you are giving by your phone, you can just lift it up in Jesus' name. Our dear loving Father, what an honor, what a privilege once again that you have caused us to be in your house this morning. Lord, we have not come without that which to honor you with, O oh God. And we pray that as your people give their offerings, their sacrifices, tokens of their appreciation, tokens of their gratefulness, almighty God, of honoring you, everlasting Father. We pray that the windows of heaven will be open, almighty God, and great blessings will be poured upon them in the name of Jesus. And as we have read in your word, we declare under the grace of the servant of God, any form of toil, any form of struggle that may be upon anyone in this house, almighty God, we declare a reversal, and may you cause them to to be fruitful in 2024 to the glory and the honor of your name. Father, we declare the tithes are blessed. We declare the offerings are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. And somebody said, amen. amen. Glory to God. We send the ashes to you in the spirit of excellence to wait upon us. Amen. As you kindly uh, receive the following announcements. Hallelujah. Do I have some daughters in the house? Amen. Are you ready for our mom? She's ready for you. I tell you, our monthly DOZ meeting is Saturday, 
30th of March 2024. It's going to be at 2 p.m. Make sure that you invite a sister girl and tell them to come into the house of God. Our baby dedication will be on Sunday once again, 31st March 2024. So kindly, if you have a baby to dedicate, kindly make sure that you just register them at the care desk on your way out. Our premarital class, our registration is ongoing for those intending to get married between June and November. So kindly make sure that you also register at the care at the information desk after this service. Now, the Children's Church Department is requesting all parents to pre-order. We are requested to pre-order the current workbook at the information desk. Amen. There is a beautiful workbook that our kids have been using courtesy of the Children's Church. And so we are requested to kindly pre-order uh, the one for this, uh, for, for this year. And that will be a great blessing. Uh, now, the, the, the Heroes for Christ Men's Empowerment Forum. I tell you, we have some amazing men. You know, you can't even recognize them, but they are here. Glory be to God because of the transformation that God has done over their lives. Now, we have taken more. We have taken over another 120, the second cohort, and more are still coming. And so we are kindly requesting if you can just partner with us with men's clothes. Amen. If you have men's clothes, kindly just support us as we help this wonderful gentleman. Hallelujah. Soon enough, you'll see one gentleman here walking down the aisle. You'll never know. Glory to Jesus with a sister girl in this place. So if you have some clothes, some shirts, some shoes, something that you can, you can even buy some and just bring them along. And that will go a long way in Jesus' name. Now, those that wish to join Mission for Soul Winning on Friday, our missions department have taken a trajectory of doing soul winning on Fridays and on Sunday after the service. Glory to God. And so if you'd like to be part of that, kindly you can talk to Pastor Zippy. She's going to be right there at the bookshop after the service and that will be a great blessing. We are still continuing with our drive of recruiting our members into the department and so many people are joining. So if you've not yet connected, so please make sure that you go out there at the desk and inquire more on the very departments that we have in the house and that will be good hallelujah now wedding bands amen wedding bands james carrier kamau and ruth wamboy gedaiga will be joined in a holy matrimony on the 29th of uh, march 2024 at kenya institute of special studies kise kasarani at 11 30 a.m and thereafter a reception at the same venue today they're not in the uh, they have gone to their mother's church uh, but next sunday they're going to be here as we pray for them glory be to god are you excited to be in the house of the lord i tell you the glory of god is in this house your solutions are in this house amen I'd like us with the joy of the Lord to put our hands together as we welcome this beautiful looking amazing choir. Come on, put your hands together as they come to minister. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time, celebrate Jesus. Amen. Tap your neighbor for me and tell them, yes, one aweza. <laughs> Just help us with your hands. Put your hands together for Jesus. Woo! Mokozi wetu Yesu bwana wa mabwana. Mokozi wetu Yesu bwana wa mabwana. Unaweza.
for Jesus. Put your hands together. You look like angels. 
You look like angels. You look so beautiful. And you've done such an amazing work. Thank you for ministering to right directly to our hearts. May God richly bless you. Lift up your voice and give a shout of praise for the choir one more time. And by the way, if you want to join the choir, you can see Gadoni. And she's going to direct you on how to do it. If you want to join the choir. We need you guys in the choir. And she works together with Pastor Lydia. Pastor Lydia is actually in charge. And so we want you to come join the choir. And I believe that the Lord is going to bless you. We love you so much, guys. You've done an amazing job. Put your hands together for them one more time as they walk. We cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. I will not take that one. Hey. Tell your neighbor, our choir is dangerously anointed. And they've done an amazing work. Amen. How many of you know that God can? How many of you know that God is able? How many of you know that he will never leave you where he found you? How many of you know that he will never fail? How many of you understand that God who started a good work in you is faithful to complete it? How many of you know that God has never, ever, ever diverted from his word? How many of you know that if you stand on God's word, he's looking out for it. The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. And I declare so shall it be. He can never fail. Somebody say amen. Lift up a shout to the King of Kings and the Lord. I'm talking about Jesus, the one that woke you up this morning. Some of you are still wondering with Jesus I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one who went to Calvary for your sake. The one who's seated at the right hand of the Father right now interceding for you. The God that loves you with an everlasting love. That it doesn't matter where you are, he comes to fetch you. That he will leave the 99 for the one that has lost track. Oh, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Put your shout and as your hand and a jump it. Tell your neighbor, why it not for the Lord? I would have lost my mind. Tell them, tell them, tell them, why it not for the Lord? I would not be looking the way I'm looking right now. Tell them, why not for the Lord? You would not like me the way you are liking me. You are seeming to like me. Why not for the Lord? You would not have sat next to me. Tell them, if I told you a little of my story, you would even wonder whether God has done the full work. Because I'm coming from a mighty long way. Tell them, I know I look all sanctified and together. I know my colors are matching. But baby, if I told you half of my story, you would know when I go mad about this God. You would know when I lose it. To whom much is forgiven. Yeah. They love much. Oh God, I wish I had a witness in the house. I wish I had a lover of God. I wish I had a lover of Elohim. I wish I had a lover of Yahweh. He is the God that loves us. Yeah, yeah. And we love him because he loved us first. He showed us the way of love. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He does wonder. Somebody say, my, my, my goodness. I love him too much. According to your knowledge and your will for me, what you say you have done, I just need to align. Oh, because you are not a man that changes your mind. Oh, those that know you will trust in you. Not in horses and chariots, by the arm of flesh, no man shall prevail. No man, no man, no man, no man. Confidence is you. What is that? What is that for you? It can never exist. It can never exist for According to your knowledge. According to your knowledge and your will. What, what you say you, you are done, done I just need to allow you know. Because you are not a man that changes your mind oh. Cause I know you will trust in you Not in horses and chariots But the arm of flesh No man shall prevail No man shall prevail No man No man No man No man No man My confidence is you what? what is love? What is love? What is love for 
Shout like you know. He never fails. Shout like you know. Your God can never fail. Shout like you know. Your God has done it for you. Shout like you know. 2024 is your year of fruitfulness. Shout like you know. This is your season of increase. Shout like you know. Your God is holding your hand to take you where he started with you. Shout like you know. You are making it in life. Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. Lift up your voice and say, Bishop, it is well with you. You are blessed. You are favored by God. You are fruitful in every way. In the name of Jesus. We love you. We miss you. Come now. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. We love you, honey. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming. Tell your neighbor, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. I, I don't have a doubt. I know he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. In the name of Jesus Christ, and somebody said, Hallelujah. Hey, hey, I have a word. Hey, I have a word. Oh, yeah, I have a word. I was coming in the car, I was telling these guys, Leave me. When you see me just talking things, leave me. Don't worry. I'm in my own zone. I'm in my own world. Just leave me. I was coming in the car. Eric was looking at me funny. I was like, yeah, keep looking. You will understand. I said, I feel like a woman that needs to give birth now. You do you understand me. I came with prophetic shoes today. Hey, sent by your father. Prayed on by your bishop. He laid hands on me this morning. And he said, baby, go and download what God has put in your spirit. And so I came with an anointing from your father himself. Today is our day. Somebody say hallelujah. Lift up your voice and say, we are ready, mama. Came with my prophetic shoes. I tell you by the end of this service, somebody's going to come out of here knowing what it is that they were created to do. And they are going to do it well. Turn with me while you're still standing to the book of Judges. Honey, we love you. Thank you so much for loving us, for raising us, for being with us. Thank you for praying over us. I know that even right now you're praying for me. I love you so much. And we can't wait to see you back taking your place, uh, uh, your office, and doing what God has created you to do. And we know it's happening. Somebody say hallelujah. Judges chapter 4, we are in verse 4, we're going to read all the way to verse 10, so we're going to do it the way Bishop does it, I read one, you read one, like that, up to 10, okay, we're starting from verse 4, and we are reading it from the TPT, oh, no. <laughs> you all are too much, so I'll start and then you go ahead, are we together, clear your throat, <clears> throat> Thank you so much, the pastors in this house, the elders. Come on, put your hands together for amazing people. We love you, Pastor Caro. You did an amazing work. Pastor Mwaneki, you guys are too much. Uh, Mahogo and your wife, prophetess. All of you guys, I love you, Pastor Dennis. All of you guys, Pastor Zippy. Please, if I don't mention your name, Pastor Augustine, uh, Pastor Lydia, all of you. It's all of you. Yes, I love you guys. Judges chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 4. So I'm going to read verse 4. You read verse 5. God raised up Deborah to lead Israel as a champion deliverer. She was a prophetess and a fiery woman. She presided as Israel's judge. Eh? Nime Peter? Oh, and then Sasa. I was taking you as a... Okay, start now. She... She sent for Barak. I want you to hide that in your spirit. And the people came to her. Right? Hide that in your spirit. I'm coming. One day, she sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from the valley of Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, Yahweh, the God of Israel, commands you, go, deploy 10,000 men from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun, and march to Mount Tabor. Uh-huh. Oh, 
Hold on. Hold on. Hide that one in your spirit. He will have Yakatarabasia. He will have his many chariots and soldiers. But, hey, I will give you victory over him. He will have what? I feel God. Let's go. Uh -huh. Barak replied, I will go if you go with me. But if you don't go with me, I won't go either. Read. the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh and 10,000 warriors followed him and Deborah also. Hide that also in your spirit. And 10,000 warriors followed him and Deborah also. Read with me Judges chapter 5 verse 6 and verse 7 again from the TPT translation. I'm going to just read it for you real quick. In the days of Shamgar son of Anath and in the days of Jael, no one felt safe the roads were deserted, and those who dared to travel took back roads. Champions were hard to find, hard to find in Israel, until I, <laughs> put your name, Kathy, took a stand. I took a stand and arose as a mother in Israel. Father, use me today. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice be heard. Do wonders that only you can do. Use this mouthpiece as a channel, as a pipeline. God, I have nothing to give. I have nothing to show but you. So Lord, flow through this vessel. Th flow, oh God. Heal, deliver, set captives free. Move by your power. Send your anointing that makes preaching easy. Move, oh God, in your glory and let somebody know without a shadow of doubt that today was their day. In Jesus' mighty name. And somebody said, Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your voice and say, I better Hallelujah. Amen. And then sit on your enemies forever. Are you ready for the word of God? When Moses died, God walked through another faithful leader. And today I want you to title the message. It is a very, very interesting title that you're going to understand what it is as we move on. The title of my message is Fruitfulness. And then you put a dash and say it's a chain reaction. I will let you know exactly what that means. It's a chain reaction. It's a chain reaction. Just put that besides fruitfulness. So when Moses died, God walked through another faithful servant called Joshua whom he used to lead Israel into victory over fierce, battle-tested warrior nations. Israel was well on its way to conquering the promised land, but then something happened. The word of God tells us that Moses died, and so Joshua, uh, so, sorry, after Moses died, Joshua took over, and then Joshua died. And so when Joshua died, the people lost their zeal. The Israelites grew weary of driving out the Canaanites. They were tired of besieging city after city. And they were tired of doing what it is that they were created to do. So they wanted to slow down and lay back and not work as hard as they were working before to drive out the pagan influences out of their lives. And so I want you to understand something here that is very critical that the enemy will always push you for weariness. What the enemy wants you to do is get tired. You have been trusting in God to do something upon your life. He seems to have taken a minute. And you're wondering, God, will I still hold on? And many are giving up or growing weary. They are growing tired of waiting on God. And as a result, you then allow the enemy to walk in because that's what he does. I don't know if many of you remember a man called Samson in the Bible. The word of God tells us there was a lady who was sent for his humiliation and death. 
And when that lady was sent to him, the word of God says she kept on insisting to hear what it is that he gets his strength from. And the Bible says that he kept on uh, taking her around in circles, but she kept on persisting until he grew weary. When he grew weary, the Bible says he now told her his secrets and what causes him to walk in power, that he can lift up gates and he can kill with a jawbone and he can do all might wonders that everybody was getting surprised about and so he was now uh, weary so it was easy for him to give the, st the, 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 the to give away the power and where the power came from and we know the story that Delilah now got a hold of him and the rest is history according to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 the word of God tells us and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not I want to wake you up and tell you do not be weary let me say that again I said don't get tired the God that promised is too faithful so don't get tired now our vigilance is never for a day or two days and that is where the problem is that we can fight and fight and fight and fight but our vigilance we must understand should not be for a day or two our vigilance is until we go to the grave we must fight until we go to the grave. That is why the Bible say, tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, according to the Amplified Version, the Bible says, Be sober, well-balanced and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times that your enemy or the enemy of you as the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking whom to devour. So when you get weary and tired of war and going where God has called you to go, the enemy is very happy because then he can drive you where he wants. I want you to understand he's a tyrant and he wants to direct your path to do all the wrong things. And so the people of Israel began to tolerate whatever the devil brought their way. They began to tolerate it. It was like it's okay to be promiscuous. After all, everybody is doing it. It's okay to cheat on your husband. It's okay to cheat on your wife. It's okay to lie. It's okay to bribe. It's okay to do this and that. And so they began to tolerate their neighbor. Somebody said, don't tolerate your neighbor if they don't know God. Or say it like a warrior. Let them know that you're you. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Don't tolerate their, their, their choices. And they grew accustomed to the ungodly beliefs of their neighbors. They grew accustomed to it. And as time passed, a new generation of the Israelites came into adulthood. One that was easily enticed by the sexually loose state that the nation was in. And so they were morally corrupt. And they, so they joined the Canaanites into whatever it is that they believed. God had intended for Israel to be a shining light. I want you to look at your neighbor, ask them, do you know that you are a shining light? <laughs> remember what the little girl, Pastor Carol told me she's eight years old, when they did the dance lights. Do you remember the little girl and what she said? So we, the dance lights, are going to show you the adults <laughs> how to shine your light. Can you imagine a little girl understands that you are light? I declare your light shall not go off. Yeah. You shall not put your light under the tables. Yeah. It shall shine everywhere. Somebody say amen. amen. And so his laws were their wisdom. They were supposed to walk in the laws of God and cause the other people to get the wisdom of God from them by obedience. But I want you to understand the surrounding nations were to take note of the God that they served. But instead, the Israelites grew weary and they started a cycle of rejecting God and tolerating their idol worship. And they started to suffer military conquests of the enemy nations and they were crying out to God for deliverance but every time they would cry out to God God would send somebody to come and deliver them and then they would walk in righteousness for a while but when you look at the book of Judges chapter 2 from verse 11 to verse 23 you understand that the repetitive cycle you can actually read the whole of Judges the repetitive cycle kept going up and down they kept on repeating and doing what it is that they were not supposed to do and when you read verse 20 
25 of Genesis 21, I mean not Genesis, sorry, Judges 21, when you read verse 25, you see something that is very unbelievable. The Bible says every man did that which was right in his own eye. Do you know that as a man, you can get to a place where you can do anything? Tell your neighbor, by the way, why not for God? Me, I can do dangerous things. <laughs> Tell them, tell them, please. Let them understand who they are sitting next to. Tell them, if God cannot deliver me, hey, tell them, tell them, you saw me at night. <laughs> you don't know me. If God left for a minute, the things I can do, come on, talk to them, the things I can do, only Jehovah knows. I can do very dangerous things. Somebody say amen. So the land was be, be debauched and near ruins and under the rules of the Canaanites, liberty had been lost. And for us today, we understand that the, the, the Canaanites symbolize the flesh, the natural things, the carnality that is an enemy before God. Carnality is an enmity before God. You can never be carnal and attract God. When you become carnal, God checks out of your life. And so I want you to understand the flesh is very deceptive and it is very treacherous because it appeals to you but it's lying to you and the funny thing about the flesh is that you can never put it aside <laughs> and decide from today uh, this thing is dying no the flesh you will carry it up to the time you enter the grave that is why your vigilance must be there forever do you understand me do you know the flesh will cause you to think things that you can't even tell your neighbor just look at them and say, what? I don't want you to know what I just thought. <laughs> because that's the truth. The flesh will think things and do things that will shock you and flabbergast you and dumbfound you because the flesh never gets saved. I want you to look at your flesh and say, you can put all the oils. Tell it, tell it. You can put all the oils. And by the way, when you get to my age, the things that now they bring that are an attraction is young skin, young skin, young skin. Everywhere you go, they now put those things. And you know, when you're older, you start to see, okay, maybe I can use this and that and the other. Tell them, you can use all the oils you want. Tell them, you can use facials and massages. You, and those are good for you. You can go to the gym. Actually, we want six packs. Some of you are on one, you're on your way to six. God bless you. Uh -huh. you, you can use packs and all that you can do all you want but tell them at the end of the day the flesh is the flesh it can never get saved so you must edify your spirit can we talk today and so you get defeated because of the flesh you must rise up above the flesh so that you can become all that God created you to become. And so they didn't know because, you see, the enemy dangles uh, things, fleshly things over your life. You see a girl passing your way. You're a married man. You see a girl passing your way that you have never seen anything like that. Yet you don't know it's deception. They are there. <laughs> Tell your neighbor they are there. But deception makes you think, si <gasps> jawayona. <laughs> I've never seen this is too beautiful why because the enemy dangles things on your face but when he dangles them he doesn't tell you the repercussions he only tells you just get this get this and do this and do that and do the other bribe this person today do this to this one today do this to this one he dangles things that look amazing they look so beautiful but at the end of the day they are leading to death and so today I came to introduce you to a woman who looked at the status quo and decided to be different her name is Deborah lift up your voice and say father help me today to hear your word Say it one more time, Father, help me today to hear your word. And so Judges chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, it says that the roads were not safe, they were deserted. Another version says the village life had ceased, there was nothing going on until Deborah arose. Every time sin abounds, I want you to understand that God has people that he raises up to change the trajectory of history. And today, this morning, I'm looking at some of them. I'm coming right where you are. It's going to get good. It's going to get hot in this house. Lift up your voice and say, preach, mama. I can't hear you. Say it loudly enough for me to get engage. Tell your neighbor, this is not a time for you to play small in order to fit in. This is a time for you to be different. Even if you're going to be the only one speaking that language. 
It's a season for the Deborahs to rise up and take their position. Even if you're going to be different, somebody say amen. Because I came to declare it's time for your fruitfulness. you got to arise in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand here that as remarkable responsibility and a personality so that God had given her many gifts inside of her and she got tired of being tired of seeing her people wayward, her people down, her people downcast. They were the borrowers and yet she knew that the Bible says they are supposed to be the lender. I declare by the end of this year, you shall not have any debt. I told you I came with prophetic shoes. Today I came to prophesy. If you're ready for me, I'm ready for you. I declare in the name of Jesus, some of you by June, you will not have any debt. Fear had hit the people. They were so scared that the Bible records this is are the people of God who are supposed to show the way. And that's why I'm giving you the little history so that you understand. Instead of showing the way, the Bible says they were using back roots. They were using, what do you call them? Streets. They were using chochoros. We call them chochoro in Kenya. For those of you who are watching us from different parts of the world. They were using those alleys that nobody can see. Why? Because they were full of fear. I want you to understand that this is the thing that the enemy uses over the children of God. He disqualifies you with fear to make you think that you are too much of a mess for God to use you. I want to tell you God will use your past, present and future for his glory. I don't care how bad it's been. If this woman can stand and preach to you, I want you to know that there is nothing bad enough. If Paul can stand and write over half the New Testament, who was a murderer, I want you to know that God is in the business of using rejects. God, I said God is in the business of using rejects that have decided to follow after God and become godly. Somebody say hallelujah. Lift up your voice and say, I may look outnumbered. I may look surrounded. But he that is in me is greater than the he that is in the world. Tell them I don't care if I have small muscles. It's not in the muscles. It's in the one that's inside of the muscles. Oh God, I came to prophesy over somebody. People who make impact. Uh, people who had a very uh, 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 wayward kind of life. They didn't look like they were going anywhere. I believe when we are talking about the children of Israel, even her herself, Deborah, was in the same category. She could not imagine that God could use her. Do you know that you can be in the midst of so much trouble in your neighborhood that you can't believe that God can raise you as the one to go and deliver them? I, I don't want to go ahead of myself, but I'm coming. I'm sure her life was bleak just like the rest. I'm sure her life didn't look like it was going anywhere just like the others. But the Bible says she arose. The difference between you and the rest is that you must arise. The difference is that yes, there is poverty. Yes, there is pain. Yes, there is sickness and disease. Yes, there are things going on around here. Yes, the marriage is under attack. Yes, my relationships keep going. But to I am arising. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. You see, when an aeroplane is about to take off, what it must do is that it must engage in speed. It gets into such speed that it has to be lifted up from the ground because it cannot stay on the ground. I came to talk to somebody. For you to be lifted, you've got to get up because God cannot lift you while you're still sitting. God bless his motion. You have to decide in the name of Jesus, I am arising from this quagmire. I am arising from past mistakes. I am arising from this situation. I am arising from a low self-esteem. I am arising from feeling sorry for myself. I came to talk to somebody. You are not supposed to be pitied. You are supposed to be envied. From today in the name of Jesus, I declare you rise up and become all that God created you to become. Somebody say hey. The force of lift only comes in when you attain speed. You cannot lift unless you attain speed. When God says arise, shine, for your light has come. 
That means arising is a command to become. And today, this morning, I want to command everything that has sat on you. You are arising above it. Ay, 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 ay. Am I in Jubilee Christian Church? I said, am I in Jubilee Christian Church? I said, you are arising above it. You are arising above that poverty. You are arising above that abuse. You are arising above that past mistake. You are arising above your problems. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody say, arise. When you arise, you begin to overcome your negative attitude. You begin to overcome the prevailing status. You begin to overcome what is facing you. And you are so high up, you begin to face it. I'm coming. Ah, listen to me. For you to arise, listen. When you look at the Bible, there are many instances that Jesus speaks about arise. And so I want us to write this down very clearly so that we can arise and do what it is that God created us to do. God, you read in the Bible all the time, he kept saying arise or rise up, arise or rise up. This is a command, not just a simple instruction, but it is a command with an anointing. When you arise, there is an anointing behind that arising. I want you to understand that the enemy cannot keep you down if you choose to arise. And so today, I came with a word for somebody in this house. You must arise from that situation. It cannot keep you down. Uh -huh. This command also demonstrates victory over darkness. Victory over darkness. Things that have made it dark for you to ever see the light that God wants you to walk in. And so, arise is a command that defies laws. What does it defy? It defies natural laws and it also defies spiritual laws of sin and death. When you arise, you defy spiritual laws of sin and death. It also results in an end, uh, in, in an end to long periods of struggle. So when you arise, the long periods of struggle come to an end. The bondages and the limitations come to an end because you have decided to arise. It offers immediate supernatural launching to the top. You refuse to stay down and God begins to launch you to the top because breakthrough cannot be limited by somebody who has chosen to arise. When Deborah decided to arise, it was a game changer. Everything around her had to change. And I don't know who I came for this morning, but you gotta get tired of being tired. You gotta get tired of going around in the same circles. You gotta get tired of fighting the same devils. Some of you, it's March. You've already given up for December. I saw a joke the other day on, on uh, somebody sent me a joke and saying, uh, your pastor said last year was a year of breakthrough. Did you break through? That devil is a liar. I want you to open your mouth and say, I'm not talking about bishop. I'm talking about somebody just putting a joke across the social media on pastors. But I want you to understand that there are people who broke through. Yeah. There are people who got healed. There are people who, got, let me tell you, I got a message the other day. Somebody said, mom, continue preaching because there is a time I came to, to church. I used to walk with a, 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 a mbaba. I was, I was kept by a mbaba. That means a sugar daddy with very one big stomach. And he's the one who had kept me. And he's the one who was paying for my house and, and doing all manner of things. And I, I used to be there. And I came to DOC and you said, do not stay with Mbabas. That is somebody's husband. You're messing up with somebody's life. And yours will be messed up with. You need to stop, stop, stop. So after preaching, she went and told them, Baba, it's over. What did them Baba do? He told her, by the time I opened my eyes, relocate. You must come out of the house I pay for. You must leave the keys for that car. You must come out. She said, you know what? I'm going to try God. I'm going to come out of it. And it is okay in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, she stepped out of that house. She went back to her mother's house. She started afresh. Today, she's in the United States of America. Hey! She told me she's getting married in a few months and she will come and do it here so that we ashamed the devil. I don't know who I came for, but I want to let you know it's working. I want you to know it's working. May it work over your life. Some of you will walk down the aisle this year. Some of you by June, you will walk down this aisle. I know we are in March. Oh God, I came to prophesy. Some of you by May, 
today some of you by april you will have met somebody some of you by july you will be married so, hey, hey. you think that it's gonna take a long time but some of you are about to become ceos you don't hear me some of you are about to open franchise everywhere I feel like preaching. Arise is a command to freedom. It's a command to freedom. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 5. The Bible says, For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise. Which is easier? It's a command to freedom. And I came with that command by the spirit of the almighty God to declare freedom over your life in the name of Jesus. I don't know what has changed you, but I came with an anointing from on high to declare freedom. Arise is a command for provision. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 8 and 9, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Arise is a command for provision. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are arising into your provision today. People will not sit with what they have for you. God has already commanded widows all over to take care of you. God has already commanded bosses to employ you. God has already commanded it. I speak it in the atmosphere. Nobody will go out of here jobless. People that are looking for jobs. I declare provision. I declare provision. I declare provision. Arise. Arise is a command to possess. Genesis 13 and verse 17. The Bible says. Arise. Walk in the land through its strength and its width. For I give it to you. It is a command to possess. And I declare as you arise, you possess your land. You will not be a beggar. You will not be moving from house to house. I declare in this year you are building a house. You must possess your possession. Let me open my mouth and declare as far as your eyes can see. God has given it to you. May you open your eyes as you arise in the name of Jesus. And receive what you see today. It is a command to possess. Possess your possession. What is it that you want to possess? What are you desiring to possess? I want to declare in the name of Jesus. You shall possess it this year. Because we are talking about fruitfulness. Arise. Is a command to cross over to the promise. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2. Moses my servant is dead. Now therefore arise. Go over this Jordan. You and all these people to the land. Which I am giving to them. The children of Israel. So I want you to understand. It is a command to cross over. I declare your promises are coming to pass. Every promise that God has said over your life, they are coming to pass. In this year of fruitfulness, you are arising and getting a hold of a crossover anointing. You are crossing over from poverty to wealth. You are crossing over from sicknesses to healing. You are crossing over from lack to gain. You are crossing over from uh, uh, borrowing to lending. You, I can declare you are crossing over as you arise in the name of Jesus. Arise! Is a command to defy the power of death and destruction. The Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 41 and 42. The Bible says, then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kumi, which is translated, little girl, I said to you, Haya karabasaya, arise immediately. The girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. I declare nothing in your life shall die.
I declare nothing in your life shall die. I declare in the name of Jesus everything in your life shall live. I declare no person shall die in your life. I declare no wealth shall die in your life. Oh, it's coming to life in the name of Jesus. Talitha kumi, little girl, arise. And the Bible says immediately, she got life again. Ah, arising is a, a command that defies death and destruction. I don't care whether the enemy had planned to kill you. I stand to declare, you will not die, but live to declare the works of God. I declare the Zoe life of God begins to move over your life. The Zoe life of God begins to move over your life. Everything about you will live. It will not die. I want you to say, yeah. Your money shall not die. Your wealth is not going with the dogs. The devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. Whatever belongs to you is coming your way. You will not lose your life. You will not lose your money. You will not lose your favor. You will not lose it in the name of Jesus. The unmerited favor of God is upon your life. You will not miss out on your visitation. I stand to declare everything lives. Hear ye the voice of God. Talitha come here. Arise and live. Arise and live. In the name of Jesus. I declare it shall not die. For you to see change, sit down. For you to see change, you have to arise. Nothing can ever change without you arising. Nothing can ever move without you arising. For you to see change, God will bless you as you arise. Arise from a pity party. You are not to be pitied. You are to be envied. Do not allow the devil to start pitying you. Ah, ah. Look at your neighbor say, ah, do I look like pity? Smile at them. And when she arose, she began to reawaken them to their place of purpose. And she began to speak faith over them. She started to pour life and hope to them. She began to reawaken the sleeping lions. The people were going to her for direction. And she would graciously give them direction by the fear of God. For her to sit on the palm shade tree, Deborah looked over the highlands of Israel. And these dry hills were her people's homes. There were dry hills that were her people's homes. And she could see that all was not well. In the valley below, armed bands preyed on Israel's peasants. Travelers and caravans, the lifeblood of her region, were too frightened to even use the main roads. Like I said in the beginning, they had relegated themselves to nobodies. And they were, it, was, it was so bad because they were too frightened to even be seen. And they were using back routes and it was time that was chaotic. It was time that they didn't look like they had anything going. The other day somebody wrote to me and said, Mama, I feel like selling my kidney because I need lots of money. And I feel like selling it to get money. I wept. I wept. And I said, God, how did we bring you to the place of wanting to sell our parts? You can give somebody a kidney because of compassion that God has put in you. But not to sell for money. Am I talking to somebody? Listen to me. You're not running to fleshly ideas. I declare in the name of Jesus. You will not run to flesh ideas. Carnality will not work in this place. It will be led by God. Somebody say hallelujah. And I want you to understand. The reason why you are uncomfortable in your workplace. Is because there is something you carry that God wants you to change that place. The reason why your family makes you uncomfortable by the things they do, where they are and how they live is because there's something God wants you to do in that region. And so I want you to understand, whenever God wants to do something in a region, he will raise a person. And so you need to know that you could be that person that God is looking at right now and that is why you're paying such a high price. 
Some of you are paying a price that you can't even begin to explain. I can't even begin to tell you. We were speaking with my husband the other day and saying, my God, what manner of price is this? Because you pay such a high price that you can't even understand. You look everywhere, it's just pressed. But I see oil coming out of every press. I don't know who I'm talking to today. <laughs> but I see oil coming out of that press in the name of Jesus. You will lift up a microphone and the heel will, his sick will recover. You will lift up a microphone and you will get favors everywhere in the world. No door will be able to close for you. You will see open doors all over the world. You will be going from one flight to another flight. You will be asking your people to help you because you would cope with the demon. I wish I had a witness. In this house, she fearlessly took her position. And because she decided, you know what? This is enough. I have seen... Because see, they had let the enemy rule. If you let the devil take a mile, he's going to take ten. And so people are f afraid of witchcraft in their homes. That they can't even go home driving because they're afraid of what will happen to them when the car is seen. Hey! 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 Go go that means that you, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. it means in Greek, ah, you cannot allow the devil to be the one in control over your life. I declare fear checks out of your life today. You will not walk in fear. You will walk in faith. Knowing that there is no divination against Israel. There is no enchantment against Jacob. You rise up and declare war in the spirit in the name of Jesus. Ah, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. I want you to know that God has engaged you and given you what it takes to wage war because he's the one fighting through you. I, I feel like preaching. She fearlessly took her position. Deborah had tremendous influence. I said to you to put in your spirit that the people were going to her. Uh, because she was a trailblazer and a pathfinder. She was the, the, the one that God would use to transform the entire region. I want you to understand that the, the noblest men, the, the most strongest men, the most powerful men were also in hiding. They were also in hiding because they were so scared. Even the powerful men that carried weight were so scared of stepping out. They could not come out because of Fear. This is what the devil does. He paralyzes the people of God with fear so that you're so afraid to rise up from your situation. You're so afraid because you saw somebody died. You're so afraid because you saw somebody got ill. You're so afraid because you saw somebody died. I declare that somebody will not be you. You are the deliverer in the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. A courageous woman, she rose up and she got a revelation. Write this down. A revelation a revelation gives you guidance. It offers insights for decision making. Revelation gives you understanding and knowledge of divine truths. Revelation strengthens your relationship between you and God. It, it strengthens your intimacy and your relationship between you and God. Revelation brings correction and admonition. It warns and highlights areas where you need to change. That is what revelation does. Revelation inspires and empowers you to fulfill purpose and make contributions to the world. She got a revelation. And the Bible says, and this is where my preaching begins, I was warming up. I start to preach now. The Bible says, ha, the people were going to her for counsel. But when revelation hits you, you don't wait for people to come. You rise up and do what God has called you to do. The Bible says she summoned for Barak to come. Ah, Barak did not go to her. She summoned for him. I want you to understand Barak had a position in society. But when God has given you a revelation on who you are, you're not intimidated by offices. You respect offices, but you do what it is that God has commanded you to do. I feel like preaching in this house. Uh, God has placed you in an organization at such a time as this, so that you can bring order. You can begin to change lives around you. And the Bible says she called. Uh, lift up your voice and say, God, 
has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I want you to open up your heart again and say, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Say, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. When you know that God has called you, you don't get intimidated. The Bible says uh, she now called for Barak to come. Because for you to face any opposition and to overcome, you must be strong enough to enforce God's will. No matter the opposition, you must be a woman and a man that can enforce God's will in a situation, no matter the position. And she called him and she began to speak to him. And she said, I want you to understand Barak, God has commanded you. I want you to know she was not just giving an instruction. She was giving a command. And she said, God has commanded you uh, to get a hold of 10,000 men and go to war against these oppressors. And she said, you know what? Enough is enough. Of course, I have paraphrased. Enough is enough. He has given you uh, the city. I want you to know that you are going to win. But God has said, go and get 10,000 thousand men and let's do this and the man was very clever he looked at her and he said I cannot go without you and she said I thought that was coming and I'm ready for war and she said boy I'm gonna go with you because I'm cut out for a time as this I don't know who I came for but I sent somebody's time is here they are going to arise you're going to be hard off in offices you never imagined you're going to be hard off in nations you never thought of and the Bible says she told Barak this is what you must do and hear me today immediately she caused a chain reaction I'm about to preach when something is described as a chain reaction it means that a series of events is triggered by one initial action and each subsequent event triggers the next, creating a continuous sequence. And this causes a rapid spread or an escalation of events. So when you say there is a chain reaction, and that is the title of my message, a chain reaction, somebody has to step out and begin to make a clarion call. And that is what I'm doing right here, right now at JCC, when she took a step, ah, Charlie, are you, re oh, are you ready for me? Are you ready for me? When she took a step, I want you to understand that she gave everybody else permission to take their step. I'm about to preach. Hear me today. Hear me today. When you take your first initial step, automatically you begin to create a chain reaction. The Bible says uh, she called on the man of God and she said, Barak, God has summoned you and commanded you to go get 10,000 people. I want you to know this is a man that was afraid. This is a man that was hidden. Yet inside of him, he had the power to command 10,000 people to align. What was he needing? He was needing one person to take their position and create a chain reaction. The Bible says Barak took his position and he went and got 10,000 men. Where were the 10,000 men? The 10,000 men were those who were afraid. The 10,000 men were those who were hiding. The 10,000 men were those who were using Panyarut. Ah, when they had the clarion call, there was a chain reaction. The Bible says they stepped out. Erakatana Mazai. Ah, Barak took his position. Barak positioned 10,000 men. And they said, let us do it. Because he who began a good work in you. Has not given you a spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of sound mind. I want you to know God wants you to create a chain reaction. Could it be? The reason why your family is still down is because the chain carrier is still seated. 
Could it be the person that needs to change Kenya is not changing it because the person is still seated. I declare you shall cause a chain reaction. You will rise up and they will rise up behind you. I want you to see how a chain reaction works. When Joseph picked his position, he gave his 12 brothers permission to take their position as the 12 nations of Israel. And they were all patriarchs, but they were all waiting for the initial command. I come to declare today, you are carrying the initial command for your generation. There must be a chain reaction for where you need to go. I want you to hear me. Let me bring it home. God tells Bishop to start Jubilee Christian Church. Bishop starts Jubilee Christian Church. In a short while, Pastor Ben comes with a paper bag all the way from Shamahoho. He comes and he submits. In a short while, he is transferred to South Africa to go and light the fire of Jubilee Christian Church because it's a chain reaction. Ah, when we started Jubilee Christian Church, the chain reaction began. And the Pastor Carlos, and the Pastor Monekis, and the Pastor Morris, and the Pastor Andrews. Now we are all over the world. USA can feel the power of a chain reaction. UK can feel the power of a chain reaction. Ah, South Africa, everywhere in Kenya can feel the power. Right now as I'm ministering, there is Tika Road that is ministering. There is Nakuru that is ministering. There is Mombasa that is ministering. Why? Because a man called Bishop Alan Kuna rose up and started the chain. What chain are you going to start to react and bring holiness and bring the power of God to humanity? And the Bible says, when she stood, Barak stood, and he said, go with me. And she said, I'm going to go with you because I have the power, ah, because I'm anointed for this. And I came to talk to somebody in this house. You will not be intimidated. Ah, let me try that again. I said, you will not be intimidated. Whatever God has called you to do, you will do it. I declare your voice will not be stifled. You will not be covered. You will not lose your track. Whatever God has for you, you're taking it out there. And so hear me now. Here they are fighting. And the Bible says uh, the people came with chariots and horses. I told you to hide that in your spirit. The Bible says, I want you to know by, by, by strength shall no man overcome. I want you to understand it's not by strength. Some may believe in horses and some may trust in chariots. But we... Trust in the name of our God. I want to declare while they were running with chariots, the Bible says God caused there to be a quagmire. Yani God akalete matope. I need to, you to understand. Some place that was nothing like matope. God brought mud. So the wheels began to come out of the chariot. God is about to remove the wheels of the enemies. Oh, read that. Put it back again. I want you to read it with me. Put it back again. Let's read it. Oh, we're going to pray in this house. I will draw Sisera, the commander of Javiname, to fight against you at Kishon River. He will have many chariots and soldiers. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, they look many. But against my God, they are nothing. They are rubbish. Stop being intimidated by the size of the people that are surrounding you. Stop getting intimidated by the size of your warfare. Stop getting intimidated by the things that have outnumbered you. Oh, God wants you to be outnumbered so that he can show himself strong. I declare in the name of Jesus, those chariots will have no wheels. The Bible says, God removed the wheels and whatever they were trusting in, God removed it. And the Bible says they won the battle. Not only did they win, it was an overwhelming win. Tell your neighbor, you're not just climbing up one step at a time. Tell them for me, it shall be overwhelming. You see, when you're fruitful, you can't just be fruitful alone. It has to be a chain reaction. When you're fruitful, somebody has to feel your fruitfulness. Now don't come here. 
When Gatoni gets a song to sing, she cannot compose it and, 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 and do it alone. Charlie, come here. She is going to need a producer called Charlie. Now, Charlie cannot just play the keyboard. If you've ever had music with the keyboard alone, it, it doesn't work. He's going to need a do. He's going to need a do. A do is going to do the drums. When you play the keyboard and the drums alone, oh Lord have mercy. David praised until he's close. Oh Jesus. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Uh -huh. He's going to, you see that's the power. When you see God moving powerfully, the devil tries jokes. Jokes is on, on him. Uh -huh. She will need this. We are going to need the bass guitar. Christopher come here. We're going to need the bass guitar to make her chain begin to react. Her chain cannot react by herself. We're going to need come the, 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 uh, and you say, what is it? And you say, unachezanga gani wewe main? So unachezanga main guitar. So mama, there is main guitar, there is bass guitar. Where is uh, Didier? Find your way over here, did you? Uh, we are looking. This is the, the, the box guitar. So we need all these people. What about the saxophone? We cannot do all these beautiful songs without a saxophone. So what has this done? Chain reaction. It's a chain reaction. She has elevated this one. Who has elevated this one? Who has elevated this one? And 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 this one? With one song, everybody is eating something. I came to declare, you are going to revolutionize the world. You are going to make a chain reaction. When we start something here in JCC, it's going to be a chain reaction. All over the world, we will see daughters of Zion. All over the world, we will see Jubilee Christian Church. All over the world, we will see a lifting. All over the world, we will see God manifest. All over the world, why? Because it's a chain reaction. You will not be elevated alone. This is what fruitfulness looks like. There is no way Deborah could have had it alone. She had to get Barak. Barak had 10,000 people waiting. There are people waiting for you. There are people waiting for you. But you need a chain reaction. You need the beginner. You need somebody that's going to start the chain. Rakatarabasaya. We need a revolution of chain reactions. When she arose, Barak arose, 10,000 people arose. And then the devil was also working for God. Because I came to tell you, when God is on your case, even the devil works for your God. The Bible says, uh, he sent Sisera to go to jail. What he did not understand uh, is that jail uh, was also in the chain reaction. When you're in the chain reaction, you don't do your own things. Uh, they don't play their own music. Uh, they play music from here that flows to the rest. Uh, that is how you synchronize. You don't lift up your own. That is why it's a chain reaction. I want to let you know, by the time she got to jail, Rekatanaba, Sisera thought, we got this. And the Bible says, he went into her house and she made him comfortable. Because I want you to know in this season, the devil will not know what you carry. Until you put him in his place because some of you are about to put the devil the devil that frustrated your family the devil that frustrated your body the devil that frustrated your life some of you are about to put him in his place the bible says she said to him he said i want water she said yes come i give you water and the bible says she gave him milk and the milk made him sleep and she took a blanket and covered him. 
and he was thinking she is a faithful girl who is covering him to sleep. The Bible says in a short while he was asleep. What he didn't understand is that there was a chain reaction working in the same direction to massacre the enemy. This he didn't know. The chain reaction was not singing their own tune. The tune was following each other. Because if she starts a song and he plays the wrong key, the song is spoiled. The chain reaction demands that all of you fall in line. The chain reaction demands that you're in your place. The Bible says he slept and the Bible records the child went in with a peg. Somebody say a peg. Tell them God will use humiliating the tactics to kill the devil for you. I want you to understand. He went with a peg. She took a peg. And the Bible says she drove it in. I come to declare the skull of the enemy. Oh, that has plagued your family. You're driving a peg right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. He will not overcome you. You are more than a conqueror. You are making it in life. You will not be defeated. This is your hour of visitation. I said it's a chain reaction. The Bible said in a short while, the man had been escorted oh, to his death. Because in this season, we are not letting anything to live that needs to die. No habit shall live. I said no habit shall live. We are killing every demonic habit from the pits of hell. Because we have to have a chain reaction. A chain reaction must live in holiness. A chain reaction must walk in the precepts of God. A chain reaction must allow themselves to surrender to God. That is why child was ready. And in a short while, she drove her peg and the man died. I stand to declare in the name of Jesus, nothing shall live that is supposed to die that concerns your life. God is perfecting everything that concerns your life. And in a short while, they had dangerous victory. I come to declare, you are waited for by God for a chain reaction. God wants you to start because there are 10,000 people that are waiting in line for you to start the chain reaction. There are many people, I want you to know, they are already there. They are already there, but you have to arise and start. They are already there, but you have to arise and take your position. They are already there, but they are waiting on you to start the song. They will not play without the song. He will not play alone. He needs the rest in order for there to be symphony, in, the, in order for there to be synchronization. So I declare in the name of Jesus, you are overcoming every battle. You are winning every devil. Whatever devil has stood in your way, there is a chain reaction that God sent me with from this altar today. You're making it in your place of work. Your business is expanding. You're not surrendering to nothingness. You're not surrendering into nobodies. You're becoming a chain reaction. You will open shops. You will be elevated in your place of work. You will go to places untold. You will get lifted by Jehovah. I want everybody to begin to pray. I want you to pray like you're losing your mind. Pray like a warrior. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Pastor Moneki, come and help me pray. Ah, I don't want you to sit down. I want you to walk around. Uh, if you're sitting down, you better be shouting in prayer. Open your mouth and pray. Declare it's enough. Chain reaction must start. It's my hour of visitation. God has already begun. The chain reaction is already moving. May it move over my family. May it move over my life. May it move in the name of Jesus. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait. Hear me. Hear me. Child did not need to wait to be told what to do. She was aligned enough to know what to do. Today we are praying that God you will align us to know what to do, when and how. What business do we need to start? Where do we need to hook up? Who needs to be on our side? Who is it that needs to stand with us? Open your mouth and begin to declare that discouragement will not kill you. You are a chain reactor. 
That discouragement will not kill you. You are rising up from it and becoming all that you were created to become. Some of you, God has raised you as Barnabases to raise up others and encourage them. Begin to pray.
But God says today, you must rise up and declare because this is about Christ. He needs to use us. Fruitfulness is for him. Deborah was not being used so that she can raise her name. No, she was being used to change a nation. Esther, when Esther rose up, she called for prayer. And when she called for prayer, nobody was like, eh, eh. no, everybody joined in. And she started a chain reaction. What happened? She saved an entire nation because of a one person. So a chain reaction is started by one person. Could it be the reason why your family is bound? It's because you are the chain starter and you're still procrastinating. Could it be the reason why you are in financial hardship? It's because you are the chain starter, but you're still going around in circles depending on the flesh to direct you. Could it be that you're still looking to man when God is telling you, look up to me. I am the author and the finisher. If you can look up to me, I can help you to walk the path. And sometimes God's help will lead you to the man that will locate you. Now, in this house, we have a powerful bishop that is such a visionary. We all know that. Such a visionary that there is nobody he meets that stays the same. Unless they want to. Nobody. Nobody has come to JCC and remained stagnant unless they chose. Nobody. He's a mover and a shaker. So I want us to direct this prayer. I want us to pray, God, lift this sin, God. Help me, give me the grace to come out of this sin forever in the name of Jesus. Number two, this house has a visionary. The visionary is for us to make it even in the marketplace. So it's not just for ministry. It's not just for pulpits. It's also for making it in the marketplace. So I want us to pray that God, the anointing you've given my father for me to get a, a, a place in the, in the marketplace. I pray that right now you will open my eyes and direct my path and I will see in the marketplace where you're taking me and I will get there in the name of Jesus. I am unstoppable. Am I talking to somebody? So I want us to pray and to trust in God. Father, my father has a working marriage. Why is mine not working? My father has a working family. Why is mine not working? What's going on? Begin to fight in the spirit. Because it's a chain reaction. The, rea the chain has already been started. Why is it not reacting? It should react. Jael was not told, go and do. Jael got it because she was aligned. Are you aligned? When you're aligned, you create the chain reaction. And things begin to happen. We'll begin to see fruitfulness in your life like never before. Right now in the name of Jesus, I don't want you to be nice. I don't want you to be nice. You're the ones who know how long you've taken waiting in the wilderness and nothing is happening. You're discouraged. I want you to get into this prayer with a revelation. Sin cannot come in. God, deal with it. In the name of Jesus. Carnality cannot find its way. God, deal with it. Help me. Help me to deal with flesh. In the name of Jesus. And from today, God, whatever is in this house for me, if there is already a chain reaction, I'm getting a hold of it. You guys must align and get songs from the Spirit because they are here. Get the songs. I know you've started. But I want you to raise the gear. You see, without a demand, you can go nowhere. We need to raise up the gear by arising and picking our position. So right now, get aggressive in the spirit. I don't want you to be nice. I want you to get aggressive in the spirit. Don't care about who's looking and who is there. You know how far your family needs to be. But they have been bound and chained by lateness. Nobody gets married. Open your mouth. Begin to do business. I want a chain reaction. If my father is doing it under Katanamasa, pray like a warrior. Pray like a warrior. Sin shall not plague you. Sin shall not plague you. Sin shall not plague you. Let's <laughs> go. 
your place. I got up, I got I will make it in the marketplace. I will make it in the marketplace. In the name of Jesus. No more toil. 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 Baraba Shatanabakaya. Shekata Kataya. Look up on your Katubia Kapaya. Look at the Kapaya. Oh, prophesy, prophesy over your life, prophesy over your career. Declare in the name of Jesus that the grace you serve shall service your life. It will service your life. This grace shall service your marriage. This grace shall restore your life. Oh, the house of restoration, your life. Oh, ya kadu ba ya kadu ba. Oh, ya kadu ba ya kaba. Oh, ya kadu ba ya baka. Oh, ya kadu ba ya kaba. 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 Mata pire desia, mata paria sede. Lo di mo koto ba, koto ria kaba ya taya. Lo pagadeta, lo pagadeta. Da 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 da, Oh, two more minutes, two more minutes. In the name of Jesus, oh, initiate a chain reaction in the spirit. Lo pika tu pagaya kataya, oh ya kante peke toko paya. Where you have stagnated, you are breaking out. In the name of Jesus, lo pika tu pika disa. Baladi dia beke sede, bali ke dia seke be. Balise dia di bese, balise dia de gede. Oh, two more minutes. Lo pika tu bia sete. Mata gapaya, mata gapaya, mata gapaya, mata gapaya, mata gapaya. Let me disappear, let me disappear. Lo pega desia, mato kapaya kata, lakata kapaya kata, let me pega de kata, mata kapaya kapaya. Oh, shata kapaya ka. La teke teke de bataya, lo ke teke de bataya paya, lo pladia se ke peke taya, lo ke tapa kata, lo ke teke teke de, lo kotaria ke de bataya, lo toro boko de bataya, maka taka ta, maka taka ta, lo kapa kata, 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 lo kapa kata. Lo pagata ka, apeka deliata, lo doria kana masai. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, Hallelujah! Come on, lift up those hands in the presence of the Lord. Glory be to Jesus, Hallelujah! Glory to God. I tell you, we sit under such a, an amazing, amazing grace in this house, and I want you with a revelation. Just lift up your hand. The Bible says that God spoke to Moses and he told him, I will take of the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70 that they may serve with you. If you serve in this house, if you are a son and daughter in this house, you are, you are, you are legally entitled to the grace that flows from the head of our dad and our mom. You shall not be poor in the mighty name of Jesus. There is a grace to break poverty in this house. There is grace for wonderful marriages. You shall be the first one to have a beautiful one in the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your voice for a minute and declare in the name of Jesus. Father, I place a demand. I place a demand upon the resident grace that is upon your servants, O God. Our dad and our mom. I decree and declare as the Bible says that the yoke shall be broken by reason of the anointing and I pray in the name of the Lord let the same anointing that flows from on upon, upon our dad and mom let it flow upon my life let it flow upon my life let every form of poverty be broken let every spirit of lack be broken in the name of Jesus may you position me in my place of abundance may I walk in prosperity may I manifest the blessing of God in the name of Jesus I thank you oh God for a beautiful marriage for a beautiful home in the name of Jesus let that grace be manifested in my life in a mighty way in the name of Jesus come on put your hands together let's celebrate oh come on rejoice rejoice
Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you, our lives can never be the same again. The Bible says the anointing flows from the head to the beard. Amen. I have one so I can illustrate well. Glory to God. To the beard and down to the skirts. Hallelujah. And there is a grace in this house upon our dad and mom. And like mom has said, all of us, that we didn't come the way we are. What happened to you? There is an anointing that worked in your life. Glory be to God. There is a grace that is working upon your life. And as mom has said, there are things you ought to refuse. This one is not in our DNA. This one, we have a DNA. Hallelujah. Yeah, we have a beautiful DNA. Glory be to God. Amen. Not fighting. Amen. You already sat. It is well. Hallelujah. Amen. It is well. You can keep sitting. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. What a word. What a word we have received here today. Can we appreciate our mom, man? Come on. Let's appreciate our mom. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's appreciate her. Let's appreciate her very well. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Have you been blessed today? Wow. What a word we have received. That's a very instructive word. Very, very instructive to all of us. And you could be here and you're not born again. And I want to give you an opportunity for you to start a chain reaction in your life with Jesus. Glory be to God. You're here, you're not born again, and you're saying, Pastor, pray with me today. I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I want you to just uh, lift up your hand wherever you are, and we are going to see it, and we are going to pray with you in Jesus' mighty name. If you're there, and you're saying, Pastor, pray with me. This is your time. You've not received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You've not received eternal life. Glory be to God. You're still dwelling in the realm of death. You want to come into the realm of life. Wherever you are, I want you to lift up your hand boldly and we are going to pray with you in Jesus' name. Wherever you are up there in the balcony, amen, as our, our worship team will be singing, I want you just to lift up your hand majestically in Jesus' mighty name. Is there anyone like that? You're saying, pray with me, Pastor, today I want to receive. There's a hand there. I'm seeing that hand there. Glory to God. Is there anyone else? Lift up your hand wherever you are. Amen. We prayed for you and we know you're here. There's another hand over here. Asha, help me. Amen. Asha, be, 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 open your eyes. Glory to God. There's a hand over there. Amen. Lift up your hand. There's another hand up there in the balcony. Lift up your hand wherever you are. You're saying, today I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. Wherever you are, lift up your hand. Lift up your hand and we are going to pray with you this morning. We are going to, don't clap yet, just wait a minute. Amen. I know they are right there. They are coming. They are going to come in Jesus' name. There are many of them. We've been praying for you. And we know that today is your day of salvation. As young as you are, Jesus leads you young. Glory to God. Don't walk in the deception that I will get saved when I'm 90. Amen. When you can't do anything for the kingdom of God. Jesus wants you young. Hallelujah. So that he can impact your generation with the grace of God upon your life. Those young people up there in the balcony, you're not born again. You're saying, Pastor, pray with me. Lift up your hand wherever you are. We are going to pray with you today. Amen. Is that another one? Glory be to God. There's another one up there. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, even down here in the balcony, under the balcony, just lift up your hand and we are going to pray with you in Jesus' name. Today is your day of salvation. It is your day of salvation. It is your day of salvation. Lift up your hand wherever you are on this side. Young people, they are young people who are on the valley of decision making. Can we just take a minute and pray? Amen. Come on, just pray for young people right now in Jesus' name that have been bound by the deceptions of the world. Glory be to God. Come on, we are praying for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Shatabakaya, Reposi Katamaka to the Bikitaya, Pasati Keposa Kipatulia Kavaria, Zante Kikolia Kavale Zabaha, Zongredila Varesia Kabakolia Gazaya. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone else on this balcony? Is there anyone else? Lift up your hand wherever you are. Don't leave this house the same way you came. Don't leave the same way you came. Lift up your hand. We are going to pray with you. Is there anyone else? I don't want to close you out. Is there anyone else? Glory be to God. Is there anyone else? Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have many who have come. Amen. But I want to believe there are more. Amen. Watch on a form. Kuna form ndiyo na kuna form bada ibada. Amen. Lakini form ni Yesu. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Form ni Yesu. Hallelujah. Those young people, lift up your hand. Amen. God wants you young. 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 So that you can set a chain reaction in your generation. Amen. Is there one like that? Another one who is left behind there. I don't want to leave you out. Amen. There is. Amen. Amen. I'm seeing hands. Amen. There she is. Glory be to God. Is she coming? 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Is there another one? Is there another one? Lift up your hand. I don't want to close you out. I don't want to close you out. Lift up your hand wherever you are. We are going to pray with you. We are going to pray with you. Is there another one? Amen. There is. There is. Thank you, Ashes. Is there another one? Thank you so much. Glory to God. Please bring them. Bring them today. Is their day of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Please bring him. Amen. Amen. He looks young. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is there another one? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? We don't want to close you out. You're feeling the Lord is speaking to you. <laughs> the Lord is speaking to you. The Lord is speaking to you. And you know it's you. Amen. It's that one, eh? Glory to God. Let him come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord is speaking to you. Come. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Bring them. Bring them. Amen. Glory to God. Come on. Let's rejoice. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Another one is coming from here. Amen. Come on. Let's rejoice. Let's celebrate the doing of the Lord in this place. Amen. The harvest is coming. Glory be to God. The harvest is coming in. Hallelujah. They are coming. They are coming. Keep coming. God bless you. They are coming. Amen. Come on, JCC. Keep coming. Keep coming. Amen. Another one is coming. Glory to God. Keep coming. Hallelujah. If the Lord is ministering to you, I know he is. Come. 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 Amen. Today is your day of salvation. Jesus loves you. Just the way you are. There's another one coming up there. Miss Mama Uyo. Amen. Saidiya Kuja PIA. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is your day of salvation. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you just the way you are. Just the way you are. Just come. Glory be to God. Don't say I want to stop fast. Amen. He will walk with you the way you are. Is there another one? Is there another one? He loves you just the way you are. Amen. Don't try to clean up yourself fast. Amen. He's here to do that. He's going to clean you up. Amen. He's going to walk in your life. Is there another one before we close? Wherever you are. Amen. There he is. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there another one? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Glory to God. Is there anyone else? Lift up your hand wherever you are. Is there another one else? Anyone else? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. If you're still coming, you can come and join us even as we pray. In Jesus' name. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen souls have come to the kingdom of God. Can we rejoice? Come on, rejoice. Come on, rejoice. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Best decision you could ever make. Pastor Zipikeli, just lead them in prayer and then pray for them. Glory to God. Amen. And if you're still coming, you can come as well in Jesus' name. Pastor Zipikeli. Hallelujah. We are happy. Have you heard the way we have celebrated you? Heaven is celebrating you also. Repeat this prayer. After me, say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I thank you that you died and rose again for my sins, for my redemption. Today, I repent before you all my sins and I pray that you may forgive me. From today, you are my Lord, you are my Savior. I ask you, write my name in the Lamb's book of life. From today, I shall live for you. Satan, I reject you and all your works. I do not belong to you anymore. I belong to Jesus and I shall live for Jesus. Holy Spirit, I welcome you in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for these dear ones that have been born today. We pray for them, O King of glory, that the same way you have shepherded us, O God, in salvation, the same way you have sustained us in salvation, may you sustain them, O God. We rebuke the spirit of backsliding 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, their struggle, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. They that are in addiction, we rebuke that addiction in the name of Jesus. My God, the Bible says that they are translated from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ. And right now, in Jesus' name, they have been translated. They have been delivered. They have been transferred in the name of Jesus. We welcome you. We welcome them, oh God. In this church, they are part of us. They are part of this family. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Can I go ahead and give them the, let's give them the books. Amen. And then you're going to walk with them. Hallelujah. What a delightful moment we've just had in the presence of the Lord. We are so delighted to bring you the word of God across the globe. And I believe you have been blessed. The Bible in Psalms 84, 7 tells us that they go from strength to strength, those that appear before the Lord in Zion. And I believe you've been strengthened and encouraged. You receive the light of the word of God to go forth and bear much fruit, fruit that will last. I know you have given your life to Christ, you who is outside there, you are backslidden and you have made the decision to come back to the kingdom of God. I'd like you to call the numbers on your screen. There's someone waiting on you just to help you understand the decision you made and even pray over you. Would you like to get any materials from our Get Understanding Bookshop authored by our Bishop Alan and Reverend Kathy Kiuna? Call the numbers on your screen. If you'd also like to share a testimony or you'd like to have any question answered, any queries, please call the same numbers. We are available for you to keep listening to this message and many others on our socials. Get to like our YouTube channel, subscribe, and even share with your loved ones. We are also available on every other social media platform. We are delighted that you came to be with us. And on behalf of our bishop and our mom, I'd like to give you a huge thank you for having stayed tuned. May God bless you and cause you to increase throughout this week. My name is Sylvia Mbogo. Be blessed. <laughs>